Okay, so let's talk about the case statement. Now, the case statement, also known as the switch case statement, is basically an if statement, just improved a little bit. But before we get to that, I want to show you guys a cool trick for in the future when you guys maybe want to work, maybe create your own GUI. So you right click on a component and just say quick edit. That allows you to not only change the name to let's say edit in the number and in the text to let's go let's make a one okay and then with the button you can do the same it is really 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 nice eating a case you just say click me and boom there you don't have to go through all of that anyways so let's go with the case thing so what well let's let's create the case thing first so let's create a few variables and assign it variable okay. so here we have assigned the variable and we have created it and also another interesting thing and um, if you ever wonder where this string to end comes from it actually comes from system utils which is kind of nice but that's just some extra information anyways so what we're basically getting is the number that the user inputs now I'm going to show you guys how you can go with using a case statement instead of an if statement to do things like this. So let's quickly do this with an if statement. Let's say if I num is equal to one, then what they should do is they should let's say get a message that says Hey, that's oh gosh, I can't do that. Hey, that's one. Okay, and that's a basic if statement. And let's say else if the number I num is equal to two, then begin. Show message, and we can then go number two is selected I don't know okay so basically this is a basic if statement now didn't that take quite a while to write now let's quickly show you the case statement if you type case and you press space then a nice thing is you can go case of I know and then you can go to the inside and let's say if it's one then you put it one colon and if you go to the bottom you can get show message we can actually just copy this if you think about it and there we go now if we go to colon and we do this this is basically the same as this for example, let's quickly comment this out and run the application and see what happens. Then right here if we say 1, hey that's 1, and if we make a 2, that's 2. Okay, now let's uncomment that and recomment this, well not recomment, just comment that. Now let's attempt it again. If it's 1, it says hey that's 1, if it's 2, it says Hey, that's two or two number two selected. So you might be asking yourself, why use a case statement if you can use an if statement? Well, first of all, a case statement is faster. You just say case and you say which variable you want to check. In this case, that basically. And if it's one, basically if you say if it's equal to one, then do this, do this. Else, if I num is two, if I num is two, do this. Now that's nice, right? But why? Why would you rather use this if if statements might be easier? Because reading an if statement is a lot easier than reading a case statement in most cases for beginners. Well, 
The thing is, case statements have a little bit of an advantage above if statements in most languages. If you are developing a game, for example, then writing a bunch of if statements could potentially slow down the game. Not they, it's not to say it will, but an if statement basically goes like this. It first reads, if inum is equal to 1, then it's go okay, let's go here. But if it's not, it's going to be like inum, if it's equal to 1, okay, it's not equal to 1, okay, let's continue. inum is equal to 2, um, no, it's not equal to 2, continue. It's going to go like that. But if it's a case statement, it's go i case, or, or not case, case inum. And it's going to check what the number is or what the value is. And then it's going to say nope, nope, and it's going to find the value at once. You know, it's, it's a lot faster in terms of that. Now, what if you wanted to add multiple lines, for example? Let's say if it's free, you wanted to do multiple things. Then you can go begin and you create your own little code block. And you can say show message. Oh gosh. Show message. Free is the key, and we can then go, um, let's say, bt in case dot caption becomes free. Free, let's put it that, okay. Now you can add more than one thing here, and there shouldn't be any errors. As we put a free there, boom, free is the key and it changes the caption to free. Now you might be also thinking, okay, let's quick look at this. What if you want to do this? I'm, uh, and else if, inum is bigger than free, for example. And then write your begin and stuff like that. And else if. Okay, and then write your code in here. Now, there's not a specific way, as far as I know, to actually do this in a case statement in Delphi. But what you can do is, let's go for... for dot dot, and let's say 99. Now, basically what this does, is it says, if I now is more or equal to 4 yeah it, it just says if it's more or equal to 4 and inum is less or equal to 99 dude th this is basically what this says so whilst you cannot specifically do that and not have this you can have this. You, it's just going to be in a specific little section. So if the user is like 100, it might not work. But then you can go show message. Uh, that's a... Oh gosh, I forget you can do that. That's a big number. And yeah, then... If it's between 4 to 19, let's just not slap the if statement run. And let's say we put in 89. That's a big number. But then you might go, okay, but what if it goes out of bounds? What, what if they cannot do this? What, what if it goes above that? Then what you can do is you can go begin. And you can add your begin and end there and you can go else. And then you can add your begin again, and go show uh, show message. Oof! No number found. Then if you were to run this and put one hundred here, oof! No number found, even though it is out of bounds with the ninety nine. It will still allow you to do this, it will still give you the extra option. So basically it's going to read this and then it's going to see there's nothing else there. And it's going to say, but then it's going to decide, okay, let's go in. Boom, it's going to go in. 
But that's why Dalfi does this. Why this line, this else, is at this line when you press Ctrl D. Even if you put it back there at the end, press Ctrl D, it's going to go back here because it's going to see, okay, so if none of these are working, then it's anyways going to skip to the else and it's going to be execute this. And that is basically the case. You don't need to use the case. If you like using if statements, then it's personal preference. I personally used to love using the if statement. I always used if statements because it was easy and, you know, I just never struggled with it. But as I grew more experienced in programming, I switched a little bit more to using cases instead of ifs. Just because I find it to be faster, and not not in terms of the, the code that executes, in terms of me programming, I can just say case and start typing. I don't have to write the entire if statement. I just find it faster, and then at the end of the day, even easier to read now. But if you're a beginner, or not even a beginner, if you're a, an experienced programmer, you do not need to use case statements. It is truly personal preference because the if statement is literally nanoseconds slower in the case statement. So even in time in terms of making game, it doesn't really matter that much. But anyways, this is the basic case statement. You can use it and you can I don't know, enjoy using it or not enjoy using it. You don't even need to remember about it. You just need to know it exists.